So we were specifically looking at heat changes during dissolution of salts in water. And remember, dissolution of salts means that we're dissolving a salt into water. Salts are in a lattice structure and in a solid form usually. And this means that it's very uniform and very specific kind of structure of alternating a positive and negative ions in a salt. When we put salts into water, they dissolve. And the ions dissociate and intersperse between the water molecules. This process can be endothermic. And the endothermic process, remember, is one where heat is absorbed from the surroundings or the environment. And the heat absorbed to break bonds is less than the heat uh, released from forming bonds. And the solution will end up feeling cold. In exothermic processes is one where the heat is released into the, system, uh, into the environment, remember? And the heat absorbed to break bonds is more than the uh, heat released from forming bonds. And when this happens, the solution will feel hot. So to dissolve salt in water, ions dissociate, and this is an endothermic process. So intermolecular forces between water molecules are also broken because they need to accommodate for the ions. And this is also an endothermic reaction because we need to break bonds, remember? And intermolecular forces between water and ions form, so it's an exothermic reaction. So when this, uh, first we break bonds in the ions, we break bonds in the water, and then we form bonds between the ions and water because they're moving in together and interacting. And forming the bonds is always an, ex is an exothermic process. The dissolution process is exothermic if the energy required to, in the first two sections, so to break the ions apart and to break the water apart, is more than the last, so to form it. And the di dissolution process is endothermic, so the opposite, if the energy required in the first two processes is less than the last. So, so as an example, the dissolution of sodium hydroxide, so NaOH, um, is when we have NaOH as a solid, put it in water, and it becomes an aqueous solution, denoted by the AQs here, uh, positive sodium ions and negative hydroxide ions. So in this case, it's an exothermic reaction because we have a negative uh, delta H. Ionic bonds in the NaOH molecule are broken by absorbing heat energy. So absorbing it from the outside means it's endothermic. Water molecules, uh, water molecules that interact together, are the, those inter intermolecular bonds are broken by absorbing heat energy. And that's endothermic because it's absorbing the heat energy. Water and ions form strong intermolecular ion dipole bonds, and this is exothermic because they're forming the bonds and releasing a little bit of energy. The formation of the bonds between the water and ions uh, requires less heat than to break the bonds, so therefore it's exothermic. Another example is ammonium nitrate, which we write here as the equation. So we add it with water and it becomes an aqueous solution of Na uh, uh, nitrate and ammonium. Uh, this process is endothermic because it's denoted by a positive delta H. And the ionic bonds in the molecule are broken uh, by absorbing heat energy, so it's endothermic again. Water molecules are broken apart to accommodate for the ions, and it's endothermic. And then we form the bonds between water and the ions, uh, so ion dipole bonds are formed, and this releases a little bit of energy, and it's considered exothermic. So this, this delta H sum, uh, this value, is the sum of all these uh, endo and exothermic reactions. And the formation of the bonds between water ions requires more heat than the ones to break bonds, so therefore it's an endothermic reaction. So just remember back to the previous lessons, we were looking at calorimetry, and this is just a recap. It's the process to measure the enthalpy. So measure changes in a heat of known amounts of solid dissolved in a known amount of water um, in a heat insulated container, which we usually use is a styrofoam cup. So an exothermic process will be releasing heat, so increases in heat, whilst endothermic is an, a decrease in heat. So just remember that when we're disoluting, uh, dissolving salts in solution or water, we are breaking bonds and that requires energy in, so it's an endothermic reaction, but we're also forming bonds, so it's an exothermic reaction as well. So it's the sum of all these. Thank you.